have uh, Amul, I know this 2001, one. one onwards, because 2001 they joined uh, Masters. And I told in some personal communications that uh, I think your contribution, no, I'm not, I'm, I probably am telling this publicly now, your contribute, uh, all of your contribution in President's University will go uh, very, very long way. Uh, mark my word and probably, you know, uh, we'll sit together maybe, you know, maybe 15, 20 years down the line and we'll see. Uh, because uh, the, the reason is that uh, the I, I sometimes say that the one part of the uh, one part of one frustrating part of being a teacher is that you don't we don't sometimes even realize how we influence others because immediately the influence is not being told uh, you know by the students to the teachers but uh, at the corner sometimes remains and then probably those influences comes back so i'm super confident i mean i am super confident about this aspect so i, I Thank you very much for uh, all the work that you people are doing. I really appreciate. Thank you so much. <laughs> I, I really, I really appreciate. <laughs> I'm, I'm really passionate about that aspect yeah. of the portfolio. So I'm. Thank you. So okay. So, um, uh, so um, okay. I'll be talking about uh, some implications of this early method-dominated epoch. Uh, so let's uh, let's put the context. Uh, what I mean. So I have definitely few slides. Uh, I and uh, I want. I plan to you know discuss all of some of those, um, but please feel free to interrupt me because the, the I think the reaching the end of the slides is not definitely the goal. Uh, in in the process, if we discuss something, that would be very nice. Okay. Mm, I, I I'm pretty sure that I'll I'll drop some slides. That that's okay. So uh, so therefore. Uh, the issue is that uh, what is early method-dominated epoch? So that's that's the first thing that we wanted to understand. The statement is the following. So therefore, we know in the cosmological evolution of the universe, at some point, the universe becomes mat became matter-dominated, correct? You know, this, this we know the current universe is, um, and although not matter-dominated, it is at the moment dark energy-dominated. But before the dark energy domination, it was standard matter dominated universe where the galaxies and the structures and everything was formed. And before that matter domination, we know that the universe was radiation dominated. Okay, so that's a standard uh, notion. Okay. Now <clears throat> I am talking about, I'm talking, I'm going to talk about before the standard matter domination that we always discuss. Okay. Another extra epoch of the universe, which is matter dominated. So that's, that's why I call it early matter dominated. Early means there is one more extra matter dominated epoch, okay, than the one that we know, the late, okay, uh, so and how that is cosmologically consistent, and if that epoch exists, what might be the possible implications? That's the kind of uh, the goal of this of the discussion, and it is difficult to prove that particular epoch, and that's the reason essentially uh, we would like to discuss. So let me see. Mm. So you just click on it once. Ah, yeah. Okay. So this is a long, <clears throat> this is a long agenda. So don't worry about it. So, uh, so this talk would be also uh, kind of um, you know discussed in the context of cosmic inflation. So that's what I'll talk about cosmic inflation a little bit and in a very introductory level only with the uh, on without equations core part uh, with physics part. Then I'll talk about what is what do I mean by this early matter dominated epoch, and I'll try to define uh, that, that particular epoch. Then I will talk about, as I mentioned, the title suggests some implications. And some implications are let's say, for example, some of these some of these papers you know, that I um, that I worked in in some way. There are some things here. So maybe in this process, I may drop out this particular uh, paper. It looks like this will be long. Uh, so maybe I'll talk about this one, this one, and then we'll also talk about this one, okay? And then I'll conclude. So, okay. So this story that we have seen it uh, quite well, so I just want to kind of um, repeat so that we are all in the same same um, page. So, so this is the expansion of the universe. The statement is that we started with a very hot um, radiation type of uh, in universe. That is what we call this Big Bang. The very beginning, inflation at some point happened. Okay, I will dis I'll discuss about this inflation later. At the end of inflation, at the end of inflation, universe became 
radiation dominated. Radiation means the universe was like filled with highly relativistic particle. So radiation does not mean necessarily in the cosmological context photon. Radiation in the cosmological context means this energy is much, much larger than the rest mass of the particles. Okay, so that's the definition of the radiation. Okay. So Higgs particle is radiation if the energy of the Higgs particle is very high. Top quark is radiation if the energy of the top quark is much, much larger than the top quark mass. Okay. So therefore, at very high temperature, every particle was radiation. So that's broadly the statement. The universe expanded at some point of time. Okay. Very important thing happened. That is called the Big Bang nucleosynthesis. Okay. And that happened at the temperature of, let's say, for example, 1 MeV. Now, from observation, it is absolutely important to appreciate that we know that this nuclear fusion, okay, this epoch must have happened, uh, must have happened in a radiation dominated epoch. Because to do nuclear synthesis, you need a thermal bath of temperature of few MeV, which is the temperature of one minute or a few seconds. Okay. So that is a that is that is probably absolutely robust. Okay. So because all our nuclear synthesis predictions are based on the thermal bath, okay? In the thermal bath, how the nuclear reactions works, based on that, we make the predictions, okay? Then from there onwards, the universe further cooled down. At some point, cosmic microwave background was formed, okay? Cosmic microwave background formed around the electron volt temperature. The universe also started to become matter dominated. So by the time here we reached, cosmic CMB was formed. By the time, the universe was already matter dominated. So in the standard case, so when I say matter domination, this part is the matter domination part that I'm talking about, okay? And all the part in the standard normal nomenclature before the matter domination was radiation domination. That's the standard history of the universe we know, okay? And then there are little things that the late part is this, uh, late part is this, um, is dark energy domination and so on and so forth. Um, <clears throat> So, um, uh, yes, and then, and then the point of the current discussion is the following. Now, we know that the Big Bang nucleosynthesis observationally must have happened in the radiation dominated universe, but no way it is observationally excluded that this part, okay, that is from the end of inflation to the Big Bang nucleosynthesis, it can be absolutely matter dominated also. Okay, there is no observational, no observational constraints, or there is no observational guidance which tells you that from this part is radiation domination. This can be anything. This can be anything. Only thing that you need, whatever you do it here in between, whatever we do it here between, when the nucleosynthesis is happening, the universe is radiation dominated. That's the only observational constraint that we have. Okay. Now, the fact that why we think that this part is radiation dominating, there are some reasons. One is that it's the simplest one for sure. Another one is that we have some theoretical prejudices. Theoretical prejudices. No, no observational in, um, uh, in indication that this part of the universe is uh, radiation domination. And I will explore this particular possibility that before the Big Bang nucleosynthesis, the universe was matter dominated okay now how that can happen in what context it can happen this is something that i'm going to discuss okay but that is the overall context into the whole story and this epoch when this particular epoch is not radiation domination but matter dominations that epoch i will call early matter domination this is early matter domination and this is the late matter domination okay in between bbn can be uh, BBN has to be radiation domination. Okay. So now uh, to disc to put the discussions in the context, okay, we have to kind of also set up certain other things. So I'll try to put up the stage. Now from the plant, uh, this is 2015, but 2018 also we know that the the cosmic microwave background is is highly homogeneous. What is important to uh, what is important to appreciate about this plot? Is not that these fluctuations is tend to the fluctuations is tend to the power minus five. The first thing to appreciate is that it is it is homogeneous and isotropic 
at the level of these fluctuations. Forget about the fluctuations. The fact is that this, 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 this is the fluctuations. But the amplitude of these fluctuations, or maybe it's the RMS amplitude of these fluctuations is 10 to the power minus 5. What it means that universe is homogeneous and isotropic at the level of 10 to the power minus 5. That is a very, very high accurate homogeneous and isotropic universe from the, from the observations. Okay. Now, the obvious questions might be, what, what is the reason okay, that this universe might be so homogeneous and isotropic? Okay, so that was the that was the question. So, the, so in, if something is so homogeneous and so isotropic, there must be some reason that okay. So let's say, for example, in this room, if everything is gas has an equal temperature, every corner of the room. So there must be some reason, correct? And the reason must be there must be some temp time scale, okay, through which the gas must interact so that the, the, the room essentially becomes homogeneous and isotropic, correct? So there must be some time scale. In a similar way, that we must ask the question: what is the mechanism? That, that makes this whole universe so homogeneous and isotropic, okay? Because that is a very unnatural way, unnatural thing to observe, okay? And that is, that is something that I would like to convince you. And this is what is called in the context of, um, uh, in the context of the Big Bang cosmology, this is this problem that why the universe is so homogeneous and isotropic is called the horizon problem. I definitely won't go into the technical details, but the summary of the story is the following. In some sort of time coordinate, which is called the conformal time coordinate, okay, uh, conformal time coordinate, the light, this light ray, light ray goes in the 50, uh, you know, so called 45 degree. So maybe this is not 45 degree, but okay. So the light ray goes 45 degree, so that is the best way to draw any causal structure of the space time in this conformal time. So if you draw the causal structures of the conformal time of the standard Big Bang cosmology, Okay, that means Big Bang cosmology means where the where the universe is expanding, but it is always decelerating. Okay, standard Big Bang cosmology means like you know, expansion of the universe is decelerated. Okay, that's what I mean. Then you can easily calculate this is the same this time, and the statement and this is the start of this um, start of this universe. Let's say. You can calculate. Okay, you can if you calculate the past light cone, you will see that the past light cone has no overlap with each other. Okay. Now, if the past light cone has no overlap with each other, so that this point and this point has never talked with each other. So that room, that corner of the, if that corner of the room and this corner of the room has never talked with each other through some sort of interactions, it is very unnatural to find that corner of the room and this corner of the room have the same temperature. Because there is some reason that why those corners of the room are same. So, so therefore, the, my previous statement was that this point and this point is homogeneous and isotropic with the level of 10 to the power minus 5. But from looking at the structure, I see that this part and this part was never in causal contact in the past history. So what essentially made them that this point and this point so homogeneous and isotropic? So that is the problem. That is a problem of the standard Big Bang cosmology and it is it is called a horizon problem. Okay, so why it is called a horizon problem? Let's not worry about it. But the fact is that you can see that they are not Naturally homogeneous and isotropic. Okay. Actually, you can relate the problem with horizon and some, but those are technical details, but let's not get into it. <clears throat> but in what inflation does, solutions, the, the idea of inflation solves the problem in a very, very uh, okay. Once you know the solutions is easy, but in, in a very simple way, it essentially push back this time in, in, in these connections in some sense. So that what it allows you, okay, it allows you to have this point and this point have some sort of causal overlap. So therefore now this point and this point has a possibility have the same temperature, homogeneous and isotropic, because they have some sort of causal overlap, you know, in the, in the past, in past in time. And that is exactly what inflation does. So therefore in the standard nomenclature, we will think some sort of story. I'll discuss about it, what it means. Inflation happened. Okay. At the end, at the end of inflation, we start this so-called radiation dominated big bang universe at this particular time which is at eta equal to zero okay and from there universe expands and this is where we are we are here okay so inflation essentially solves this problem now what are the properties of the inflation this is something that i'm going to discuss in a minute now, what allows you to take this time back and so on and so forth what are the conditions that you need uh, then uh, there is one more one more problem of the standard cosmology. Standard means, stand, when I say standard means no inflation, let's say. 
the pro you can write down the using using the equations of the general theory of relativity you can write down uh, this uh, the equations of this density parameter which is omega total and omega total includes all the densities except the curvature curvature also contributes to the energy density so omega parameter so that means it is like radiation um, matter whatever you have it except the curvature curvature are written is separate this k is a parameter which parameterizes how, what is the value of the curvature k equal to plus minus one and zero are three possibilities but then this if you look at this one this omega to one minus omega total so this equation is nothing but a reflection of general theory of relativity applied to the expanding universe okay if you write this equation now if you look at it if a h let's say a let's say for example a h is going down okay as the universe expands if a h going going down so this essentially becomes smaller and smaller okay so okay let me or, or maybe let me put this way no i have the slide bit later the point is that now here is the point now one minus omega total is given by minus k divided by a h square now observationally it has been found that omega total is very very close to omega total is very very close to one okay so that was this minus this is very very close to zero if this has to be zero some way this a h has to grow a h has to grow but if you calculate a h for matter dominated universe or radiation dominated universe it is exactly the opposite a h is going down so therefore in the matter and the radiation dominated universe omega total is always trying to go away from one so in the standard big bang cosmology where universe is dominated by the matter and radiation finding the universe by omega total equal to one is a very very unnatural situations okay so this is something that you don't usually get it okay but as you can see the problem can be very very easily solved okay if you do if you do something you know what you do what you essentially do during the uh, now this is this is the standard this is this is the it's a omega total i plot it and this is as a function of time so in the standard cosmology what is happening omega total is always trying to grow on the other hand omega total is all, on the other hand if it is if you take inflation okay inflation is essentially expanding the space time very very quickly which will be explained in a minute then that essentially brings this omega total very close to okay such that this essentially becomes order equal to one okay therefore so that universe is extremely flat today it is because some reason if you can expand the universe very quickly okay that would bring the universe so flat okay at the end of inflation that even if after the end of inflation universe grows okay with the matter and the radiation dominated you still remain close to flat so it, so that's what the inflation apparently does so therefore broadly what i'm trying to argue is that with this idea of inflation with this idea of inflation you solve two of this problem of the standard big bang cosmology one problem is called the horizon problem and another problem is this called flatness problems okay and the condition that i just mentioned in my last two argument is this condition that is d d t of a h inverse has to be greater than zero what does it mean an a h inverse so that means a h has to grow okay if if you look back the previous two slides you will see that if this condition is satisfied okay i can solve both the problems that i just argued before now using some of the equations you can convince yourself that is technicalities this condition essentially means a double dot is greater than equal to zero now what is a double dot a double dot is nothing but how the what is the kind of roughly acceleration of the universe because a is so called scale factor so therefore a dot is roughly the velocity a double dot is the acceleration so therefore if for some reason a double dot is greater than zero the universe is going to accelerate very quickly and it can solve the so called problem of this horizon and the um, um, and the flatness problem okay so this is the basic core idea of inflation 
Now, how do you get the universe accelerated? Okay, how do you get the universe accelerated? That is a completely, you know, uh, this, is a, this is something that you know just only from kinematics. Okay, but what you need the scale factor to behave to solve those problems. And the solutions is that a double dot has to be greater than or equal to zero. What makes the universe a double dot greater than or equal to zero? Now, <clears throat> what makes the universe a double dot greater than or equal to zero is among many possibilities, the most simplest possibility is the following. Okay. Now, let me explain what it means. Now, what we assume, okay, what we assume. So I would be, you know, I would be absolutely clear to, uh, to uh, mm, mm, absolutely try to be honest. Okay, what is required and what is essentially we expect to do. Okay, now we have a problem. The problem is that there is a big, the, there is a horizon problem and the flatness problem. We want to solve that problem. To solve the problem, we want kinematically scale factor to grow. Not only grow, we want that scale factor to accelerate. Now the question is that how do I make the universe accelerate? Okay. Now there are there are some there are some possible ways to do that, and the most simplest possible way to do that is to consider existing existence of a scalar field in the universe. Okay. So what do I plot it? I plot it v of phi, that is the potential of a scalar field, and this is the value of the scalar field phi. So this is probably you have seen it's like a let's say for example as a Higgs field. Okay, but this phi cannot be Higgs, but something like that. Some scalar field. Now, <clears throat> what happens is that now this scalar field cannot be any type of scalar field. Okay. So this scalar field cannot, so scalar field, you know, um, you know, you can write down form of the scalar field, whatever you like. Okay. But this scalar field can accelerate the universe only if the scalar field. The potential part of the scalar field is flat. Flat, what does the, what do I mean by flat? This statement obviously scientifically doesn't make sense unless I say flat with respect to something else. Okay. So here, here, so therefore, so here, so therefore it looks like a flat, right? So therefore, but if you zoom it, probably it doesn't look like a flat. So therefore, there must be some associated scale of flatness. Okay. And this associated flatness. Okay, associated flatness of the potential is parameterized, let's say broadly, by the mass for the scalar field. Okay, <laughs> so you can you can roughly calculate what is the mass for the scalar field, and the mass is let's say second derivative of the potential. And now the mass for the scalar field has to be much smaller compared to the Hubble scale during the time that you are considering. If the mass for the scalar field is very very small, the field is going to roll very very slowly. Okay. As the field rolls slowly, before it starts to come to the so-called stiff part, where the mass becomes larger, curvature becomes larger compared to the Hubble scale, okay, this potential energy completely dominates the energy density of the universe because the kinetic energy for the scalar field is going to be very, very small. Now, if you use the expression for the general field of relativity, you can easily show that if the universe is universe's energy density is dominated by the potential energy of a scalar field. Equation immediately tells you that universe is going to accelerate. Okay. Obviously, I'm skipping the technicalities, equation, not the equations and everything. So, therefore, what is going to happen as the field rolls here? As the field rolls here, so I'm presuming that at some point, if you are not taking GR code, you're going to take general zero relativity course in some cosmology. Okay. But if you haven't, that is also fine. I'm just trying to tell you without the equations. So as the field starts to roll along this line, the universe accelerates. Okay. Then at some point, when it comes to this point, okay, what happens is that universe starts to, you know, here the kinetic energy becomes large. Then all of a sudden, universe goes out of this acceleration phase. So therefore, inflation ends. Okay. At the end of inflation, what is happening? The field essentially comes to the uh, comes yeah. to the bottom of the potential, <laughs> and the field is oscillating at the bottom of the potential. So please try to appreciate. I'm no way telling you that inflation has happened in happened in the universe at the very early time through this form of the potential. This is just a you know pictorial pictorial description. 
Okay, no one actually knows the form of the potential. Actually, no one in fact knows whether inflation yeah. indeed happened or not. This is one possible way to solve the horizon and the, um, and this um, this other problem that I mentioned. Okay. Now, now for my context, for now for my context. Now, for my context, what is important is the following. Who, who, what is this? I think it's yeah, it for you. It's oh, thank you. Okay. Now, for my context, for my discussion, what is also very important. So, once the field comes to this bottom part, what is going to happen? Please try to appreciate that we don't we don't live in a universe where the scalar field is there. We live in a universe where it's why it's not flat, but why it's reading it going down. Yeah. You mean why it is going down? So answer is not answer is no one knows why it is going down, but it has to go, it has to go, go down. down. Or or inflation trend. Yeah, and and I'm I'm trying to argue the point is that you cannot so we know observationally that we cannot allow the universe to inflict like you know in, for eternity in, in, in inflation must end. Why? Because if the inflation is not ending, you know, inflation is happening and we can you know with the with the a double dot greater than equal to zero. So universe is expanding with exponential rate. Okay, it's like a goes like e to the power h t exponentially it is growing. Now, if the universe is growing exponentially. By the end of inflation, in the universe there is nothing because all other particles, even if you start with number density, has gone down because you have essentially expanded everything by the by an exponential factor. So therefore, by the end of inflation, by the end of inflation, you have to make sure that you created at least minimum all the standard model particles: electron, uh, upward, yeah. downward. Whatever we, we see, that that is bound to happen because we have, we, we have we don't live in a universe where inflation is there. So therefore, some way I have to get rid of this inflation field and get all our known particles. What is the mechanism? The mechanism is that this field phi has to decay to some other particles like standard model particles and so on. So and this process of decay is called technologically is called reheating. So basically, we are just adding a small brief phase of inflation in between just to make the theoretical predictions and so therefore we are adding the observations, the flatness and the horizon. So therefore, 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 to put it to put it in the proper perspective, we have some theoretical problem with standard cosmology. We have to solve it, the problem. So we add one very brief epoch of this inflationary epoch at the very beginning of the universe, and that epoch solves the problem of the standard cosmology. But we have to exit. We have to exit from that inflationary phase. Okay, we have to exit from that inflationary phase so that we create our so-called radiation-dominated universe at the end of inflation. Okay, now in my terminology, once the the inflaton field decays and produces all other standard model particles here, okay, I have the five field has completely decayed to other particles, and that is the start of so called quote unquote radiation dominated universe. So, therefore, inflation ends, it all of its energy of the inflaton field goes to the known particles. Okay, we create a radiation dominated universe. All these particles at this moment when the reheating is done is very, very relativistic because there are a lot of energy in the particles. So put every particle you can consider as a relativistic particle. So here you just have very high temperature radiation domination. Okay, so that's a standard big bang. So therefore, reheating you can identify with this so-called standard big bang. Okay, that's the picture. Now um okay so for my uh, for my uh, talk also i i need few more things <clears throat> obviously what does it predict this whole story this story solves the horizon and the flatness problem fair enough okay it solves the problem but does it predict anything it predicts two typical observables one is this 
something called tensor to scalar ratio, which is a y axis of an of a plot, and this is an x axis, which is called the primordial tilt. It's very simple to understand, it's so not complicated. Tensor to scalar ratio, primordial tilt, what are those? When the field is essentially oscillating, oh, field is actually moving in this flat part of the potential, okay. In the from the theory, from the from the general, from the principle of general theory of relativity, if the field is fluctuating, so this field, this delta phi, when the field is moving, this is a quantum field. Okay. So even if you get rid of the if, through the because of the expansions of the universe, you can get rid of everything, number density of the particles, because everything is going down. But at no moment of time. You cannot get rid of the quantum fluctuations of those fields because those are inherent to those fields. So therefore, even if the field is moving here, there is a quantum fluctuations of this field. Okay, as the quantum fluctuations of those fields are there, those quantum fluctuations are so-called seeds of the current structures that we see. So there are this this scalar field fluctuations are the source of here we, we we have experts in this structures all the structures that you see galaxies and everything dark matter all the structures that you see the way we understand is that the fluctuations of the inflaton field is the source of all the structures uh, structures for this uh, you know that we, that you see in the universe but that fluctuations is scalar fluctuations because delta phi is a scalar quantity Okay, obviously the structures that you see is also scalar quantity, fair enough. But the general theory of relativity tells us if you have a scalar fluctuations, it's Einstein's equations, you must have to not to violate equivalent principle, you must have gravitational wave fluctuations. There's no way you can get rid of that. So as soon as you make the delta phi fluctuate, the metric also has to fluctuate. If metric fluctuates, that inherently produces a fluctuations. In the gravity, you produce a gravitational wave, okay, which is the fluctuations of the metric. And this tensor to scalar ratio, this y axis observable, measures the amplitude of the gravitational wave produced during inflation. So this axis essentially tells you. So this is called a parameter r. If the parameter r is large, what does it mean from this formula? It means the, the V is large. V means height of the potential. Okay. So therefore, this is extremely important from the inflation perspective because the measurement of the tensor fluctuations, that is the y-axis, okay, tells you at what scale inflation has happened. What is the value of the potential? If I give you the form of the potential, any student should first ask you what is the value of V5. Forget about the shape of the potential. I must know what scale this has happened. So what is the value of the potential? And the value of the potential is directly proportional to the tensor to scalar ratio R. Unfortunately, we still have not observed R. This, you can look at the contour. These are observational contours. This is just an upper limit. So R has to be less than this. Okay, but no one has observed R. So therefore, at the moment, observationally, we only have an upper limit on R. So R cannot be here. So therefore, as you can see, some of the models are excluded for for example. So therefore, this y-axis is related to the height of the potential. That is this. On the other hand, on the other hand, what is x-axis? X-axis is the next level of information of the potential, which is related to the slope of the potential. Like you know, this field. This, the field is moving in this in, in this form in this potential flat part of the potential, but it cannot be absolutely flat. If the if the potential is absolutely flat, the field just cannot roll. So therefore, field must roll along a slope of the potential. So this x-axis of this observable parameterizes how the field, the, what is the slope of this potential. Okay. So therefore, and this slope of the potential, this x, uh, this x-axis observable is. You can calculate ns equal to 1 minus x epsilon plus this formula. But what is epsilon and eta? Epsilon and eta are nothing but derivatives of this potential, which is a first derivative is epsilon. Eta is the second derivative of the uh, potentials. So see the point how it is going to work out. Somebody gives you a potential. Okay. You calculate epsilon and eta. 
which is the first derivative and the second derivative of the potential. You plug it into the formula. You make a prediction for the NS. Somebody has given you this contour observations. This is the Planck contour. That you check whether this is satisfying or not. That's the kind of uh, goal that you have, to, you have to make sure. At the same time, you have to make sure that your R in your formula, you plug your V, you calculate R. You make sure that R is smaller than this. Because you cannot violate the upper limit of this, of this observation. And so that's the kind of, let's say the whole uh, game into the inflation story that everyone has to play. Okay. That's fair enough. <clears throat> now I repeat, I come back to um, the my, uh, with this, this is just to again orient ourselves. So let's look at it, what is happening. This is, I plotted, I plotted log, log scale. 1 over AH, you remember this is the 1 over AH formula that I was mentioning. Yes, this one. What was the condition? That AH inverse has to go down with time. That was the condition for inflation. So if you calculate it, AH inverse, so this is the time, this is the inflation part. But AH inverse is going down. I'm plotting log of 1 over 1 over AH, the AH inverse. In the standard universe, that means without inflation, where you do you are not accelerating, you are decelerating. Let's say, for example, here. Okay, this is the this is the remitting part where inflation is decaying to all the standard model particles. Then at the end of inflation, at the end of remitting, you have the standard radiation dominated epoch. Okay, all the particles are essentially highly relativistic. At some point, Radiation dominated epoch becomes sub dominant, universe becomes matter dominant. Okay, so this is what the whole story is about. Then there is one, one piece of uh, more information here that is this. Now, so what is this? To explain that, you need one more, one more information that is about this line. What is this line? Now, I told you that the scalar field is having some quantum fluctuations. Now, from our undergraduate study, we know if I give you some arbitrary functions, you can always do Fourier decomposition. Once you do Fourier decomposition, what does it tell you? It tells you that every frequency, what is the amplitude? Right? If I give you sine x, it is at only one mode, the sine kx, that's all, k, or fixed value of k. But if I give an arbitrary function, you can break the whole functions in sine 1, sine k, sine k2, sine k3, and every amplitude of the co amplitude of the sine essentially tells you what is the weightage, correct? In a similar way, those quantum fluctuations, okay, quantum fluctuations, you can break it up in different Fourier modes. That means wave number, okay? Fourier modes essentially nothing but wavelength. Wavelength means wave number, one over uh, wavelength is going to wave number. And those wave number goes, those, those fluctuations, those are fluctuations, okay? During inflation, what is happening? Those fluctuations are essentially getting stretched because the universe is exponentially expanding. And those fluctuations, as you can see, goes, they were inside the horizon, okay? This line, this line was here. So that they were inside the horizon. Actually, I, sorry, I did not explain this whole idea of the horizon, but probably that's going to take a long time. So therefore, you can see broadly the point is that during the time of inflation, the initially the fluctuations are inside the causal horizon, but as the universe expands exponentially, those fluctuations go outside of the horizon. So these are the horizon crossing. But then interesting point, and that's the most imp important point, those fluctuations again come back in this part which is the re-entry of this fluctuation. This is a very, very crucial, at a crucial concept into the whole story. That the, the, those, those fluctuations were sub-horizon at some point of time. But for this very beautiful structure that this goes down and then this goes up, those fluctuations again come inside our horizon. And those fluctuations is something that you, that you measure and that you observe. So, so please try to appreciate that inflation is making predictions here. This is a quantum fluctuation that we are making predictions here. Okay. We are making observations at this scale, CMB structures and everything. And we are by make 
by making the observations here, which is which is this plot, which is this plot, which is this plot, we are trying to infer what happened here. Okay, so this is where this is where things happened. Then fluctuations went outside of the horizon, carrying the features of the inflation. Those features are re-entered in the horizon again, and we are making observations here. And we are trying to kind of relate from the observation what might have happened in this case. Okay. <clears throat> so therefore, the important point is that even if I change something here, please try to appreciate. Even if I try to change something here, this part is not going to be affected as such. Okay, then it is going to be affected. I'll, I'll just tell you, but but main point is the following. Even if I change it here, so therefore, if I when I, in my first few slides, I was trying to argue <clears throat> that before the Big Bang nucleosynthesis which is somewhere here, okay, you do not know anything, or you can change anything because you do not have any observable. That's not absolutely correct. You can change any, you can change anything here. That is fine. But that doesn't mean we don't know anything. We know about inflation because inflationary modes went outside of the horizon. So therefore they remain un unreported of or unrelated. Okay, whatever the changes that you do. Okay, so that's a very, very nicely this works out. Only change that happens if you change anything here is related to this equation. Now, what is this equation? <clears throat> this equation is telling you, this equation is telling you the number of E-foldings. Number of E-foldings means nothing but how long the inflation happened. For our purpose, you don't need anything else. How number of E-foldings is related to, look at what are there. You have log of R. R is the tensor to scalar ratio, which was height of the amplitude. Okay. And minus of delta n reheating what is this n reheating epoch okay this relation is, so this is this this is something very simple calculations you can you can roughly see the, the, but you may say why the radiation why this matter it did not appear into the equation it did not appear into the equation because this part of the universe expansion is very very well mapped so we know from observations this how this part is essentially expanded so this part essentially, all this part essentially gone into this 57.3 number. What you do not know, how long is this reheating epoch? So that is an arbitrariness here, there. We do not know at what scale inflation happened. That arbitrariness is here. Okay. And that is related to this number of e-foldings that is NK star. So whatever you do, you also have to satisfy this kind of relation that you do. So that's your effective equation of state. That's yes. yes. a reheating effective yes. equation of state. And then, yes, so I, I was almost for, for getting forget, forgetting. Now, what is delta in reheating? Delta in reheating is the duration of the time when inflaton field is decaying to something else. You know, the standard model particles. That is delta in reheating. And you can see this is related to the H inflation, that like Hubble scale during inflation. Hubble scale during reheating, which is like a scale separation, and some of this equation of state parameter during the reheating and such. So what is that case inflation and radiation in between? That's, oh, so that's a reheating, sorry, it's not clear. So this is the time, okay, this is the time when reheating is happening, that means the field is decaying to something else. That, 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 that is this epoch, and this epoch is essentially parameter there. That's fair enough. That's very good. Okay. But this is a standard story. This part I skipped. So this is a standard story. So le let me recap. Uh, let me recap uh, so that um, so then I just I used to like to sure. I, I wanted to speak about non-standard stories, correct? So I cannot finish with the standard stories only. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> correct. So now, now, now let's this is a, like a, a movie break. And let's rewind after what has happened in the past half of the movie. And what is the what I'm trying to convince you? Is, is this is this picture? So let's recap after we discuss these things. So what was this picture? I was talking about this inflation that has happened here. Actually, I don't like this picture. That they write this big bang here. I would like to put this big bang at the end of inflation, but that's a nomenclature. So therefore, <clears throat> I'm trying to say that inflation happened at the very beginning of the universe, 
at the time of the inflation at the universe, there was nothing else except the scalar field. At the end of inflation, when the field is oscillating around its minimum, the field decay to all other particles. That space we call it, it's a very, you know, ra radiation, so they put it yellow. We call it uh, reheating. Universe is radiation dominated, then, you know, universe is expanding, 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 expanding. Big bang nucleus synthesis happened here, which is the MEV temperature. And then after that, universe becomes starts to matter dominated. And CMB here, and all those things are happening. So this is the standard history of the universe that we we would like to always talk about. And this is the most simplistic picture that we would like to talk about. Now, what I'm trying to argue, in probably I'll try to do. I'll try to argue the following point. That, as I have mentioned at the very beginning, that before the Big Bang nucleosynthesis, even in this picture, I'm assuming, I'm thinking that universe is radiation domination. There is no observation, okay, before Big Bang nucleosynthesis. Okay, so therefore, it is absolutely observationally consistent if you have a matter domination from the Big Bang nucleosynthesis back to the end of it. This is absolutely consistent. Okay. It does not mean that, as I try to argue, that inflationary observables is completely irrelevant. Please try to appreciate inflationary observables are very, very clever. They throw all the observable quantities is outside of the horizon. So whatever you do inside is okay, no problem. There is some, there is going to be some rescaling of those things. Because those observables are going to come back at this time. <laughs> In between, you do something, whatever, no problem. That's the way the inflationary inflation is, is, is working. Okay. Now, first I have to argue. Argue is the following. So this is my friend Golam asked you asked me yesterday itself that this picture looks absolutely fine. So why do you want to? What is the need to to, to distort this picture in between? I mean, you know, why I, you are unnecessarily you are unnecessarily making life complicated. And I completely take his criticism. Absolutely. But why do you want to uh, why do you want to think about matter domination early matter domination and something like that now here comes the uh, here comes the uh, philosophically or maybe we have in a, in a different approach approach is that yes absolutely this is fine fine no question about it observationally consistent this picture is minimalistic and so on so what i'm trying to argue is that that you cannot just work because this this uh, you know okay let me put it let me just Put uh, put me this uh, uh, this one. That if tomorrow, you know, I, I tell you, okay, what are the properties of the potential you need to have to drive inflation? Okay, and I ask you, these are the properties that you need. <coughs> and you draw a potential, and you draw it, which has all the properties. You might be absolutely happy that I can draw a potential. Okay, also I can write down the function, functional form of the potential which satisfies all the properties that is required by the inflation. That may, you, you might be absolutely happy, no problem with that. But you must understand that this picture of this inflation or anything else at this scale, what is happening, must be also consistent with our knowledge of high energy physics. Okay, it cannot, this picture is not operating in isolation that I can just draw a potential I can write a potential so therefore I should be happy no it must because I want to kind of find out can I find out a potential like this for example in any let's say for example fundamental physics or maybe any ideas of any ideas of physics and so on and so forth so therefore the, the writing down the form of the potential is not not necessarily done story you have to make sure that indeed you can get those potentials or not in any motivated high energy theory point of view. And trust me, I spend, I also spend, I mean, during at least in my postdoc time, I, I was only focusing only one area that is how to get this kind of flat potential. You can very generically, very generically, what you get, this is not, not what you get. You have to do a lot of jugglery to get this kind of potential. So, therefore, bottom line that I'm trying to argue. Is that you have to you have to embed this whole story 
in the physics beyond the standard model and try to see okay what are the other implications that you are getting so when you say that you have to do a lot of jugglery to yes. create such kind of potential yes. what is the physics you are using just quantum field i mean yes. you are known like quantum field theory right so therefore when i say that jugglery means it's with standard physics yeah, yeah so therefore i what i mean is that the typical the core problem of the whole study is that you write down any for any any potential that you like but you have to understand in field theory the potential must be so called quote unquote radiatively stable so that means i give you a potential v0 pi okay you have to calculate what is the quantum corrections to the form of the potential and typically if you calculate the quantum corrections to any given potential which is absolutely start with very very ideal and good you would see that quantum corrections to the potential typically makes the mass of the inflaton field much larger than the hubble space so that's a core one of the core problem uh, it has a nomenclature so it is not so easy i'm not it, it, many people do it i mean many people are doing it trying to create the whole research career is based on how to find the form of the potential that's not a problem and there are many models there are many many nice models uh, which are <coughs> which is the structures and everything but generically i'm trying to say you just cannot think that okay this potential satisfies all the conditions i should be happy no just one question so so actually you so to so me i actually you know what happened so i saw a few minutes ago it's a four something four ten i thought i have enough time so i really okay bye but i thought i could do for 30 i used to see 30 minutes 35 by 30 yeah so there up to 435 maybe yeah. for Well, you can have 15 minutes. Yeah. Minute. So let's see what the. No, I, I mean, I, 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 I will try to fit. You no, know, not. I will take more time because so I, I think, I think I'm, I'm. At least I can, if I can place the problem, that's fine. Yeah. Let's not worry about the solution. Yes, Tom. Yes. So, so when you say get the juggling, yes. This is very high energy thing. Yes. yes. So can we extrapolate from the low energy path to high energy? Yes. Yeah. So the part is also there. Yeah. So the part. Not only really quantum, uh, quantum field theory. Yes, no. So there, there is two things. One is that one is that at the end of insulation, at the end of insulation, this field no longer effectively exists because at the end of insulation, this field decays with something else. So therefore, you don't have to worry about it. The only thing, only thing that you definitely have to worry about it at the end of insulation. Uh, sorry, at the time of insulation, even if I give you this potential, okay, is this potential stable enough? Stable means like. i start with this then i calculate quantum corrections okay, using the techniques of quantum filtering the potential you start with this potential will be like this and now that's a problem so therefore obviously you cannot write the potential you are working in this quantum filtering context and you start with the potential flat but immediately get quantum correction which is become very very large then the whole framework falls apart that's the main thing no, no i think maybe if i understand so much is question yes. but probably maybe that's what i was also thinking that when we apply quantum field theory techniques yes. so i would think that quantum field theory as we understand yes. from from our standard model yes. from the, the way we understand standard model of particle physics is tested let's say up to the uh, okay. up to the electroweak scale correct but then we are talking about yes. energy scales that's yes. much, much higher than the electroweak correct. scale correct that's the extrapolation yes. of our standard yes. thing so therefore therefore you might if so the, okay so therefore you might say No, so so therefore you might say that whether the quantum field theory language yes. is applicable yeah. to the scale of let's say inflation. Yes. That's the that may be the question. That's the question. Yes. So therefore, obviously, the best part of the story is you can think of this way that this 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 limit that as observation is telling you that R is essentially much smaller and smaller. Now R, uh, so we therefore, the uh, you, so therefore, if you look at this one, R getting smaller essentially makes us V lower and lower typically. So therefore, the so therefore, the, okay. So we we roughly confident the field theoretic language of this let's say from the electro weak uh, strong and uh, the other three electromagnetic these all three forces we we are people think that they are confident. Only story is the gravity. So unless the gravity becomes strong. This language should be okay. I mean, what about the way you understand it? No, no, I'm not saying no. I'm not saying that there, there is no new forces. New forces are a completely different story. The, you know, so new particles, for example, like supersymmetry, those are completely you know altogether different. But this length scale, you can rough. Sorry, this energy scale, 
roughly you can think of the gravity is probably not so strong. So there is a scale separation of so the Planck scale and the scale of inflation. And scale of inflation is like, let's say, 10 to the 14 GeV or something like that. So, so therefore, it is not necessarily that you have to calculate this whole thing in the fully quantum gravity context or something. I mean, it's, so there, there is some scale separation. So therefore, probably filtrity language should be okay. So, so, so maybe can I, can I make yeah. a comment? Yeah. Yes. So I guess, yes, we are not worrying about quantum gravity here because okay. apparently even if the tensor to scalar ratio is 0 0.01, we see that P4, yes. V1 4 goes as 10 to the 16. So that's 10 to the V goes as like what? He so roughly this is going to be 10 to the 6, roughly 15, 16, let's say. 16 GV, let's say. So that's, uh, uh, yeah, that's sort of like the, the green side field. Correct, guard and all. Guard, guard scale, yeah, guard ah. scale. But, but my, my question is that when we derive this formula, that yes. is the connection between the potential and the scalar to tensor ratio, yes. what physics do we assume there? So uh, we, we assume uh, field theory in curved space time. No, so, so we, we're assuming, we're assuming field theory in curved space time. So therefore, story is that it is, it is, it is like an expanding field theoretic background, but gravity is not quantized. Gravity, gravity is still a classical quantized. field. So, gravity is still classical field. Uh, this H mu nu, which is related to the tensor to scalar ratio, this is still a classical field. Yeah, yeah. Only the phi, only the phi, which is a quantum field. So therefore, it's like a classical gravitational background, which is expanding. On top of that, you are doing quantum field. So you are you are doing standard quantum field theory in FRW cosmology. FRW cosmology. The gravity is still classic. Okay. So <clears throat> now, uh, okay. So this is the case. So now I, I'll come to the, okay. So yeah, so my, my, motiv my motivation was the following. So therefore, you cannot consider this physics only in isolation of just what is required. You have to also embed this whole understanding in some sort of story of high energy physics where all this phenomena is happening okay that's the pic that's the uh, picture and in that picture what happens is the following and i uh, so let's not worry about this i'll take 10 more minutes possibly just to set up the problem and then i'll quit <laughs> okay so let's not worry about the, uh, this name now so the point is that once you start to embed this theory okay this theory in any kind of, let's say, for example, beyond standard model. Okay, let me let me give an expert tell you. Now, obviously, we we think the standard model is incomplete for many different reasons. So, therefore, we need some sort of extensions of the standard model. There are many models of extensions of the standard model, as you know. Unfortunately, very unfortunately, we haven't seen anything. That's also another unfortunate thing. But we expect some physics to be there from the electric scale to, let's say, for example, the scale of inflation. And there are many proposals. Now, in these many proposals of this beyond standard model physics, one of the common common thing that comes from different directions is two things. One, okay, let me put let, one thing. Let's see, first, very common is the existence of existence of scalar fields. You write down any theory, you will find existence of scalar field, which is not necessarily the inflaton field that I just mentioned. So therefore, you would typically find many other scalar fields in your theory. And you have to understand what are those scalar fields doing for two reasons. One is that if you indeed believe into the theory, you have to understand, okay, what is the scalar field it is doing? Let's say you, for some reason, you know this is the theory of the universe. You have to understand, okay, what are the dynamics of the scalar fields? Or the dynamics of the scalar fields can guide you to understand, okay, whether those theories can be at all realized in nature or not because what has happened this this scalar field does not only does have a particle physics implication rather particle physics implications are always less because the scale of uh, physics is very very high typically all those scalar fields has very important cosmological implication okay so therefore if any of those scalar field is behaving completely odd way which violates some of the observational things it can be a disaster. And may, in that way, you can essentially exclude many of those beyond the standard model physics. So that's the kind of broad theme that people essentially work on. So then, <clears throat> in that framework, what is what is very common is something called, you know, the beyond standard model physics, is something called the, called, 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 called moduli. 
Now, what is that modular? You do not have to worry about the, the two properties are necessary. This moduli can be related to something so called string theory, but not necessarily has to be. If it is related to some sort of string theory, it has some important observational consequences. Okay, that this moduli field needs to be stabilized. What does it mean? In the context of string theory, this moduli field fixes okay, the size of the internal dimension and other things. Now, you, you do not want observationally, not only the size of the internal dimension, it also fixes all the constants, like for example, uh, uh, time structure constant, you know, the, the, the gauge coupling constant, all the constant that you see in the standard model, those values are fixed by the wave of this, this, this field, phi or sigma, whatever I call it. Now, what do I mean by the wave? Wave means the, the field must get to some particular fixed value, like here. If now, if the field, for example, is, is moving in the potential, at the present moment, what do we see? We see the gauge coupling constant is changing. We see time structure constant is changing. There are very, very stringent conditions. Trust me, from those constraints, you can make severe constraints on this particular BSM type of physics. They're because you, you, you cannot allow, because it immediately violates some of the observational consequences. So one of the important thing is that you have to make sure that the field is stabilized. Stabilized, that is, stabilized means what? It, you have to give some sort of large mass so that it goes to its minimum. Okay. So one way, so one very well-known form of the potential is called Kachru, Kalos, Linde, and Trivedi. This Trivedi is our own, own Trivedi, Sandeep Trivedi. So, uh, yeah. He's a, he's, a, um, he is a, he's a great physicist, but he became super famous after this one. Why? To calculate this potential. So to just to write, not what I mean, calculate the potential. I mean, not to not to draw the potential. I could have drawn the potential and I would have been very happy. I asked you, okay, I want to give this potential, uh, feel some mass. Okay, so no problem. What is the problem? I draw a potential and you give a mass, half m square, five square. But that's not the point. The point is that how do you get the half inch square five square? That is the fundamental question that they, that they are trying to answer. And in the context of, so let's say, Paul's string theory or something, they indeed derive the form of this modular string. And this is this. And this is very good. This is very good because this essentially has a very well defined minima. Okay. And in the minima, you can stabilize. So called stabilize means give mass of this field. Okay. So that's very good. <clears throat> But this potential also has the important, uh, uh, one very important uh, uh, you know, feature. And probably that we know from all analytical physics that this potential has a finite barrier height. So therefore, it is not necessarily, you, 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 so therefore the statement cannot be, you have to stabilize the potential, okay, at this particular point and be happy. Because the field, you have to appreciate, the field is going through cosmological evolution. So if you put the field here, no problem, fair enough. But then you have to see as the universe expands, what is this field doing? Okay. And is it now if the field some reason this is a finite barrier at least I can if the potential was like half m square five square, no problem. You put m uh, sorry five equal to zero, you are Always done. There. Always there. So there is no way you can destabilize the potential. But this is the potential, the finite barrier. Right? So I just give you one example. Maybe next one or two minutes, I'll close it. But why the cosmological evolution is very, very important. So therefore, I give you this form of the potential at, let's say, at the beginning of the inflation, the story that I'm telling you. So inflation is going on. You got this form of the potential. This gentleman calculated the form of the potential. And you put the form of the, uh, you put the field here. Okay. And you should be happy. Modulus is stabilized. Okay. All my observational consequences are going to be fine. Inflation is happening. Inflation ends. So therefore, this potential is not going to do, this field is not going to do any problem. But that is not the case. The why? The case is the following. The, the issue is the following. Two, two issues. One is that as it has a finite barrier height, there is a possibility for some reason, if the field has 
initial value which is large, the field center can come down and overshoots. Very simple thing. So therefore, the potential is always prone to bad initial condition. This was essentially uh, pointed out first by uh, in this context. So there's a lot of details, but I don't. So therefore, there is a possibility of overshooting. So you have to make sure cosmologically this field does not overshoot. That's the one thing that you have to make sure. So potential is given is not not going to be enough. Now you might say, why do I have to worry that that uh, that the uh, the field, uh, you know field is has come from here? I say I just told you correct. I, I put it here, so we be happy that I put it here and be happy and you know just go ahead. But that's not the case. The reason is the following: you start with V naught sigma, which is the sorry, I, my notation is bit funny. Sigma and phi is same, so that this is the potential that I start with V naught sigma. And this potential has a minimum, you sit there, no problem. But typically, as soon as you calculate this V0 sigma in any fundamental theory, you will see that the sigma field is going to be coupled with some other field. You just cannot avoid that. You just cannot write the V5, V sigma separately, no coupling, nothing. Because the structure for the theory is such that there is always going to be some coupling. And because of the coupling, you can easily calculate what is going to be the typical. Let's say, for example, movement of the potential from its minimum. So, 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 uh, yes. Koshida, so uh, we are we are thinking of the phi as the field that is driving, let's say, driving inflation. That's uh, no, 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 no. At least in this picture, no. In this picture, I have no. some inflation happening. Okay. And this is a separate field. So, this is something that is coming from some string theory approach that we have a moduli field. Yes. And I'm trying to argue that you have to be careful about the dynamics of the field in the cosmological evolution also. So you just cannot be happy with the field itself. So the field can even uh, couple with the field that is driving inflation. Yes, yes, and that's, that, is broadly, that, that is broadly I'm trying to argue. That you cannot completely separate out the two, two physics. Why you cannot separate it out to the two physics? Because you are not writing the potential. You are deriving the potential from any it's a supergravity, string theory, whatever. You don't start deriving the potential this plus this. You start from some more fundamental level. As soon as you write the potential, you will see there are some coupling. As soon as there is a coupling, you will see that the potential is going to be, you know, uh, the field, the minima, the, the field is going to be shifted from this. This is called the uh, classical vacuum misalignment. So you, there, there is a possibility the field can overshoot. Now there is one more possibility which is related to, which is, which is, uh, okay, I'll come to this part. I'll skip that. That is this. Now, this potential you started with, which is this one. Fair enough. Inflation ends. No problem. Let's say for some reason, there is no coupling also. So, therefore, the field is here, sitting here. You are happy. No problem. But at the end of inflation, from my previous argument, think about it. Universe now is completely radiation dominated. Okay. And in that radiation dominated universe, you have this potential. But question is the following. Does radiation changes the form of the potential or not? So you have to calculate now. That's where the particle physics is coming. You have to calculate so-called thermally corrected, not only quantum corrected, thermally corrected form of this potential. Okay. And as you can see that I am adding and thermal corrections typically looks like of this particular form. This is 2 to the power 4 A0 divided by A0 and in this case A2 by sigma. Now, because of this 1 over sigma dependence, Okay, as temperature will grow, you can see the potential will become this, this, and this. So, at the end of inflation, potential all of a sudden sees it, it potential is no longer this zero temperature potential. It has this correction term already. So, all of a sudden, the potential will feel the potential is particular this runaway type. So, therefore, even if you start with during inflation, the very nice potential. Okay, at the end of inflation, so all of a sudden, you will see the potential essentially getting destabilized because of thermal corrections, in addition to other type of corrections, whatever you can think of. So you have, and therefore, it was argued that there is an upper limit, okay, to upper limit to the temperature, okay, beyond which, if you go, the field would be completely destabilized. So this was the famous work by this, this group of people. Please try to appreciate what is T. T is the temperature of the decay products of the inflaton. Inflaton decay to all the standard model particles, correct? 
So this is the reheating and so on and so forth. So therefore, this is the temperature. Okay. So there is an upper limit on the reheating temperature. So that's where the particle physics seem to come into the picture. As soon as we added the temperature corrected potential, you see that you cannot have maximum upper, you cannot have arbitrary temperature of this reheating because that is going to completely violate that. So then what we did. So this this analysis, this analysis is a uh, is a um, analysis which is completely non-dynamical. Non-dynamical means like it's like a, you, you just look at the form of the potential, you whether that becomes potential becomes run away, or maybe potential becomes completely flat like this one. But you have to understand, you also have to calculate what is the dynamics of the field. So therefore, you have to solve the dynamics of the sigma field and the phi field in this expanding background. If you if you just do it, you will find out. I won't go into the details. If you just calculate the full dynamical detail, you know dynamical equations, you will find out the situation for the case of this destabilization is no way worse than um, than uh, than the than that what is that what has been claimed in this particular paper. It is because <clears throat> it is very it is because very simple reason because when the field you are calculating the dynamical equations, you also have to understand that there is a Hubble damping broadly. You know, the field is just not like a uh, harmonic or, uh, you know, uh, Newton's law. It is also like a Hubble damp. It is damping the dynamics of the field. So, and, and not only that, temperature of the universe at the end of inflation is not created instantaneously. Okay. It, it takes time to rise, raise the temperature. So at the end of inflation, there is no temperature. Only the inflaton field. Then the reheating starts. The reheating starts, temperature grows, 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 it goes up, and then it starts to grow down, go down. Okay. So therefore, there is an associated time scale of temperature generation. If you take care of both the effects together, you will find out that situation is not as bad as it was claimed in this previous paper. Actually, I'll I'll probably um, okay. So this, so this is one thing. Maybe I'll take one more minute. Uh, no, no, not definitely not more than that. Uh, one more minute. Uh, yeah, so that is, that is this part. The second consequences is the following. <clears throat> if, as I told you, because of this coupling, because of the coupling, field can move away from its minimum, even if you start at the minimum. Now, as soon as the field starts at its minimum, what, what is going to happen? The field is going to start to oscillate around this minimum. Okay. Now, as soon as the field starts to oscillate around its minimum, very soon, energy density of an oscillating scalar field, okay, around its minimum, behaves like a matter. That's a very, very important implication. Now, this field, what is happening? Think about it. Inflation ended, fair enough. You created radiation bath, fair enough. Now, this, this field is here, and now this field starts to oscillate. As soon as this field starts to oscillate, energy density of this field starts to behave like matter. Now, think about it. Radiation energy density is going down as like 1 over a to the power 4. But this energy density, this oscillating uh, field, moduli field, its energy density is going like 1 over a cube. Very soon, the, you, it's, it's, a, it's a very quickly, the whole energy density is going to be dominated by the oscillating so-called this scalar field. And universe is going to get into the phase of this so-called early matter domination that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the existence of this scalar field, okay, immediately going to lead to a situation where at the end of inflation, radiation is going to be completely subdominant, and this field starts to dominate the energy density of the universe and going to create something called this early matter dominated epoch. Obviously, this field, early matter dominated epoch, please try to appreciate, must end before Big Bang nucleosynthesis. Because this matter domination cannot continue after Big Bang nucleosynthesis. Because this matter domination must end before Big Bang nucleosynthesis. Because we know that Big Bang nucleosynthesis happened during radiation domination. So, these oscillations of the modular field creates early matter domination, but we have to make sure that this modulus field decays before BBN 
and again this modulus field creates a radiation bath suitable for big bang nucleosynthesis okay so therefore <clears throat> therefore uh, this picture is the final picture probably forget about the implications <laughs> this is the standard history of the universe at the end of inflation all green mean radiation domination that's a standard picture and what is the alternate history at the end of inflation you slightly have radiation domination here what happens scalar field starts to oscillate and it starts to dominate then all the way from here to bbn it dominates okay at the time of bbn the scalar field must decay again you have radiation domination and then after this one again you have the matter domination so this is this emd epoch that i am talking about and this emd epoch is generated because of this oscillation of the scalar field. I talked about only one implication, three, four other, but okay, that's not the point. So therefore, uh, my main point is that this epoch is absolutely consistent in the cosmological history of the universe, and it is important to understand and probe what might have happened in this in this particular case. Because observationally, there is no no probe to tell us that this what is what has happened in this epoch. Obviously, there's a gap. Okay, so I'll finish that. Uh, very very sorry for overshooting my name. Very large. <laughs> Time for questions. Yes, Onurup and then Moitro. And then Thoma. Onurup. Very nice one. Thank you for the yes. So I have two questions. Uh, so uh, you are giving an alternative to the early radiation dominated. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is a known, known story. This is a possibility, it's a known story. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, are there any major advantages that we could consider this apart from the model which you brought? Yes. So this, this is my first question. The second question is, so after the radiation dominated, after the matter dominated universe, so before the Big Bang nucleosynthesis, we have to again uh, come for the radiation. So how is this occurring after the... Okay. Here? Yes. yes. So here, here exactly you have to do what inflation did. Inflate on decays. And produce radiation. So here also, I, I actually, I have all these things. So you know, what are the implications and so on and so forth. So here, what you have to do, modulus has to decay. He got distracted with the samosa. <laughs> <laughs> yes, modulus has if, to decay. Modulus has to decay, and it has to produce the MeV temperature so that you can do this big bang nucleosynthesis properly. Not only that, the, and uh, those are details. Maybe not only that. You, I mean, as you probably know, you have to create dark matter. You have to create baryogenesis. So those things you have to do. I mean, even if you need to do it here. And those are very, very challenging questions. Those are very, very challenging questions. So once you change the history of the universe to observationally consistent, you also have to address how do you produce dark matter. There are, but no way as known is there. How do you produce the baryogenesis? So on and so forth. And those, those things are this. Mechanisms are there, people are working on it, and all those things are I have. I forgot your first question, but maybe I'll come back to you later. Okay. No, I think there's Moitra and then Shama. Okay. Moitra. Okay, so my question was somewhat similar. So you said that this map EMD is well because if the field is oscillating around the EV and uh, like that produces in the so for example, so like <laughs> then at some time it has to go like out of oscillation <laughs> for the, the stuff to go the radiation dominated. So how is it out of oscillation going? How is that? Really? Yes, this is uh, this, yeah. So this is uh, how how it is out of going so oscillation. Out of, out of oscillation. Yeah, because, correct. Because you may say okay, so it, it keep on oscillating. Yeah. But you all you have to you have, you have to appreciate that the fields are quantum. It's a quantum field. So field has an associated, and that's a very important point. I, I did not carefully mention that. The field has an associated decay width. Okay. Now, question is that why this field is oscillating, not others? Other scalar field, please try to appreciate. If other scalar field, if decay width is large, they will quickly decay. So they won't get a chance to dominate the energy density of the universe. This field is a very special type of field whose decay width is very, very small. Because it is suppressed by M plus square. So therefore, this is a, this is this is okay. I actually I cleverly avoided that part. This is not just a scalar field which is oscillating. It's a scalar field whose decay width is very small. So I can allow the field to oscillate for long. I cannot do that for Higgs, for example. 
is has a large decay weight. If you just oscillate the decay, de 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 Higgs will quickly decay. So you cannot, with the Higgs, you cannot make this epoch. But you can do this with this sort of small, uh, very small uh, decay weight, you can do that. So it is decaying in the end. Yes, that's the way I stop my uh, oscillations. Okay. So, yes. I can take one. Yes. 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 So energy density in the radiation dominated universe or in radiation, let's say it is t to the power 4. So whenever you know the energy, you can, can correspondingly calculate the temperature. But, so, you, okay. So, so is this, the, I uh, think it's yeah. actually much simpler uh, question. Can that if you are, okay. you are in using temperature and energy as similar thing, is that a multiplication by the both both constant? Constant. Constant. equal to kc. So, or, or roughly, I can tell you, I, I can give you the one conversion which I keep it in mind, and that you can use the rest of the thing. 10 to the power minus 3 electron volt mm, would be mm, a few Kelvin, something like that. So, yeah, so I think 8 into 10 to the minus 5 EV per Kelvin is the Boltzmann constant. If you have any oh. temperature, okay, okay, temperature, yeah, okay, so the, uh, temperature, sorry, the, yeah, this, this part, um, yeah, so uh, now KB is one. In that in, in natural unit. Sorry, yes. I am. The unit has C equal to one, H bar equal to one, and KB equal to one. Everything is being told in energy. That's the part yes, of the yes. theory. Yeah, yeah. So, sorry. I mean I, I was expect, I was thinking something different. Sorry. Yes. And but but yeah. C but equal to one for us. Huh? Yes. There are many no questions. No, please. Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come back. Come back, please. So, the slide of non standard power. This yeah. one? Okay, you please. You say in this sense, all the three is just enough for a variance, asymmetry, or washer. Yes. So, how does this give your. Oh. Uh, what is the step? The instant is modulated actually does this. That's what the question. Yeah. So my question, hey, so I did not explain. So let me explain. So what happens is that mm, let's say, for example, you produce some dark matter. Okay, let's say, for example, at this time you produce some dark matter. Okay. If you produce some dark matter, let's say dark matter has some density. But then once this field starts to dominate, those dark matter density is up dominant. So you create some value number. Fair enough. During in, at the end at the start of this inflation uh, start of this epoch, okay, you create some baryon number, you create some dark matter, but once you start once you make it dominated by this uh, by this modulus field or whatever field, all are going to be very very subdominant. So therefore, you have to again create those, and that's a major challenge. You, even if you created those, you completely washed away. It's the same story about inflation. See, at the beginning of inflation, you have all you might have all standard model particles, but you can completely got rid of those. So same study, you have to do that once you go for this alternative history. So you have to create dark matter baryogenesis at a very low energy scale. Because whatever up to the scale, it was dominating, after that you have to create. That's the whole story. But, 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 yeah, but those are, uh, those there are mechanisms to do that. Baryogenesis, something can be done for afflectine baryogenesis. Dark matter, mm, uh, dark matter production. You can do it. I mean, I I was supposed to speak about that. Uh, that also that is also something you can do. That it's not a big deal. Huh? Hinanda, and then Vinik, Hinanda. So I have a very basic question. So I was uh, wondering if there is any uh, like, is there any alternative theory of inflation which can explain uh, horizon problem, problem and flatness problem? I'll give you a very honest answer. So uh, okay, at least as my understanding goes. So obviously, it, it would have been really nice if tomorrow, if tomorrow or anyone can come up with a very good alternative of. So there is a, it's, it's a major effort. Trust me, it's a major effort. Very top level people really try to find out what might be this alternative to inflation, but some way or the other, it has not worked out. <laughs> it has not worked out means like you. So the 
you have to appreciate it is not only about the accelerated expansion. Accelerated expansions, you can get it some way, some other mechanism. But it is also about next level of predictions, which is like the properties of the fluctuations, the spectral index, tensor to scalar distance, and everything. Now, those things are not easy to produce. There are major alternatives that people talk about is something called bouncing scenario. Okay. Like instead of, so the universe is contracting, then again expanding. Um, uh, um, then uh, th there are some alternatives called um, um, ecliptic universe, which is again by this very famous Princeton physicist uh, Steinhardt is the propos proposer. But I have a feeling, whatever my understanding goes, all the proposal has been broadly failed. That's my, my uh, uh, but, but com having a contender is a good because then you have a, you know, the, yeah. Yeah, I, but it's, I believe it's not, not so, not so well. Okay. Yeah. 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 So my question is that uh, during the inflation and the early metagamian phase, I think this explained the uh, theory is just uh, kind of you understand know, all the particles are forming. How is the pressure changing throughout, or how is the is there this change of the pressure throughout this inflation and the early metagamian phase? No, so so okay, so so it, it, okay. Let me just be be clear about what what you mean by pressure. Now, when we are talking about uh, inflation, uh, let's say for example inflation. Let inflation, then here the, at the in the universe you have only scalar field, nothing else. So, in field theory, once someone has given you the Lagrangian, okay, you can calculate the energy momentum tensor. It's a one-to-one -one correspondence. Given the Lagrangian, you calculate energy momentum tensor. Now, energy momentum tensor, you for a homogeneous isotropic ideal fluid, you can relate it with the energy density and the pressure. Zero, zero component energy density, other components are the pressure. From there, you can calculate for what is the expression for a pressure of a, of a let's say, a real, of a, let's say canonical scalar field. And the expression for the pressure is like half phi dot square minus of V phi. Please try to appreciate. Energy density has to be like kinetic energy plus the potential energy, nothing else. But the expression for the pressure is half phi dot square minus of phi phi. Okay. So it is like T minus V divided by T plus V. Now look at what is happening. When the field is rolling here, as I argued, kinetic energy is very, very small. So in this pressure, you can think of pressure is minus V. And energy density is potential energy itself. So, so therefore, equation of state when the field is rolling, it is pressure divided by energy density, it is just minus V pi divided by V pi. So it cancels. So therefore, equation of state is minus 1. When equation of state is minus 1, universe essentially goes for accelerated expansion. So that is that is to answer your question, when what happens during inflation? And then your for the early matter, sorry, this early matter dominated epoch, it is dominated by a matter. It is dominated by a matter. Matter means mean matters. This, this matter. For example, I mean, okay, it is it is being represented here. It's like an oscillating scalar field, but it is non-relativistic matter, and this matter has no pressure. If you if you if you remove gravity, for example, everything, and then you put a you put a box everywhere, does box feel any pressure? No. no. So therefore, the pressure is zero. So therefore, in this early matter dominated epoch, when you call matter, effectively means it's a pressureless object. It is mimicked by an oscillating scalar field. Okay, so because it's a it's non-relativistic. The energy is non-relativistic, but pressure is zero in that in that time. So it goes from minus one to zero. Minus, uh, so therefore you can say, um, uh, therefore you can say here it goes from minus one. Reheating, it can it can be it kind of it can be many things, because uh, you know the process is complicated. You know it's a very complicated story. No one knows. At the end of reheating, when it has thermalized, pressure is one third. Because it's only radiation, P equal to one third. Right? Uh, sorry, pressure is P equal to one third rho. I mean, that's the relation. W equal, w equal to one third rho, correct? Once it's matter, it is like P equal to zero. So W equal to zero. Okay, it's happening. And then RC, they were in the So <clears throat> if we think there was some primordial black hole in the phase of inflation, so the scalar field will be scattered by that. So how will the predictions of 
current inflation model being discussed? I I had at least few, few slides on okay. of my own work, <laughs> but unfortunately I didn't get time. Okay. So so one work was uh, so one of so okay one of the work that I did is about if the EMD POC is I'll answer your question just I just wanted to kind of advertise that one work was that if this EMD POC was there how the primordial black hole formation changes that is one of the thing that uh, uh, one of the implications that we, we explored but then can you repeat once again sorry so I, I was asking that if what's if there was some primordial black hole in the case of inflation. Primordial black hole during yes. inflation. During inflation, yes. Uh, the scalar field would be scattered by that black hole. Scalar field would be scattered by that black hole. So scattered you, you by go ahead. gravitational interaction. Is it what kind of interaction? Uh, I, I mean, about? by the space time of that black hole. Space time oh. of the black hole. And uh, that's how we do uh, black hole scattering, the scalar field scattering, all that. So how will that affect? Uh, I'm, I'm saying so, that in the when if there are primordial black holes, then that affects the geometry of space time. In yes, that, yes. in that uh, altered geometry, kind of, because we know what will happen to the scalar field. Is that your question? Uh, kind of because we know if a scalar field passes a black hole, yes. yeah, there was some uh, like uh, fast normal modes or something like okay. that. Correct. So yeah, yes, yes, I don't know. So go ahead. Then, then I'm just so, trying to understand your information. Yeah, so. If this was the case in the inflation, and yes. if there was some primordial black hole, the same scattering. So somebody has to, okay, so you're thinking that somebody has created a primordial black hole. Uh, let's yeah. see. So because you see, that's a very non trivial thing, trust me. Yeah. Because. But are you saying that the, the that scalar field doesn't satisfy the energy condition? No, no, no. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that. So I, what I'm trying to say is that you have to produce a prime. So, for example, the astrophysical black hole. It accurate mass, accurate mass, and then at some point, you know, it becomes heavy from the primordial black, black holes. And what is what is the story about the, how it is different from the primordial black holes? Primordial black holes also, you have, you, the typical story is that you need large fluctuations. Yes. And large fluctuations essentially you collapse at some point of time and cre you create the primordial black hole. So that is that is the kind of story. Uh, so that, okay, these are details. But then I'm just thinking that during inflation, during inflation, you can create you you can create that uh, that uh, the fluctuations possibly. Then then what are you? I mean then you are producing primordial black hole some way during inflation. Yes. Okay. Then how the predictions that we are uh, predicting from current model of inflation will be affected by that? Actually, I, I don't know. I'm, 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 sorry, I mean, I, I just, I'm not being able to process it. Can I make a comment? I, I guess in this scenario, when we are talking about inflation, uh, as you have heard, or you know, that we are saying that the energy density of the universe is hugely dominated by the, uh, the scalar field itself. Now, you are saying that suppose by some mechanism, we don't know what mechanism, because currently when people think of primordial fluctuation, you have studied structure formation in your cosmology class. So these are perturbations in the in, 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 in the in the matter field. So primordial holes are thought of as very large perturbations in the matter field that sort of collapses to form something like that. So, but here it is unclear that during the epoch of inflation, when you are talking only about the scalar field, what could generate those PBAs? Now, let's say if something generates PBAs, how is it going to affect the inflationary dynamics? Yeah. I don't think people have thought about it because when people talk about inflation, they are saying that high is the only field that is dominating the energy. I'm dynamics. thinking so, but, but I'll, I'll tell you one, if, if you allow, I'll take one joke. So maybe this, this will clarify you. In one of my job interview, faculty job interview, the interviewer was Ramesh Kosh. Obviously, he knows a lot. Yeah. <laughs> then he kept on asking some questions, and the interviewer never gets satisfied unless you know you you get you get cornered, correct? Yeah. <laughs> so that's the kind of go of the interviewer, correct? So he was asking some question, I was answering, answering. Then at some point, he completely cornered me. Then he said, <laughs> then I, I had no answer. Then he said, okay, what? Okay, what? What do you think? And you know what I said? I think it's a, my answer was very clever. I think I need to start a project with you. Okay. So 
if you go to the thermal history slide, so you know that number 57.3 so well, which indicates that you know the era after reheating very well. Doesn't that mean that you know the boundary so well that you can back back extrapolate and know the reheating era as well? Yes, so, the, so I, I didn't get time again. So, so once, once you have this EMD epoch, the equation changes. Yes. So it's it's a this so you absolutely you are spot on. So as soon as you insert something, it is a matter of adding. You know, it's just how scales are uh, evolving, correct? And ev evolutions of the scales are related to what is the equation of state. That's what is essentially telling you. So you just have to think about this scale has gone out of the horizon and come up, come up. Now as soon as I insert this delta n emd, as you can see, this n k star. Is fifty seven point three log r delta n rating in this extra epoch has happened, and and then you have to, to, to take care about this systematically. But you are saying that doesn't change anything no. about the production of big the nucleus into. No, yeah, that doesn't change. Yeah. But that changes a very important. Okay, I was, uh, it's very sad that I could not discuss. <laughs> so you know that you see see the point is that these consistent relations you have to you have to satisfy. Right. Okay. So that that what it is doing, what it is doing. Is that, uh, oh, sh I mean, I'm sorry uh, that. Uh, you need to give another talk. Yeah. yeah. But, but that time I cannot into, I cannot talk basically uh, this thing. Okay. So my point is that you are absolutely correct. So typically you we are calculating this inflationary observables at 50 and 60 folds. Yes. That 50 and 60 folds is crucially dependent on where from 50 and 60 is coming. 60 is coming, assuming this roughly 10 is your reheating uh, efolds, efolding roughly plus minus five. But then once you start this EMD epoch inserted, this 56 is completely changed. So you have to calculate observables at completely different point. That's a very, very important point. So for example, I give you an inflationary potential. You calculate NS. You can just, given the potential, this is a prediction. You calculate this one. NS minus one is two by N. But what is the value of NK star? NK star is a value that you people take at 50, 60. But as soon as you have different epoch, this NK star is changed. So therefore, observables are changed. So you have to, so that there is, a, so therefore, and that is all coming from this scale matching. And you have to consistently do that. You have to ab absolutely consistently do that. And the statement is that if you know about this reheating epoch much more, you have less ambiguity there. So that is one of the major, I, I would say, the um, misunderstanding till now that people don't know how long is the reheating. It's a very complicated process, this whole decay and everything. It's a very complicated, but you are, yeah. But the BBN products doesn't change. Like no, 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 yeah. no, 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 because, by, because by the time you reach, it. you have to make sure that you are, you are minimum, you have to make sure thermal bath. That's for sure. Yeah. Maybe you have some question. No, no, please. Does inflation have any role on the measure the measure SMSP? So, so therefore, good. So therefore, inflation has, so therefore, uh, some inflation model, can be also used, okay, as uh, as matter antimatter asymmetry production also, and that is one of the mechanism that uh, inflaton is charged under U1. This is the afflict and biogenesis that I just mentioned. So in some cases, some inflation model inflaton is also works as this baryon asymmetry generation. No, but uh, when you say some, but you know there is uh, there was asymmetry. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Those, uh, those should be correct, right? Correct. So therefore, the, but the point is that it's not. So therefore, let's say for example, uh, I'll tell you the standard practice. Uh, maybe that that is going to tell you. So standard practice is this, correct? It's standard thermal. So typically, let's say baryon asymmetry generation. One of the major popular production mechanism is something called leptogenesis. Now leptogenesis. So the first you create lepton number, then you convert lepton number to the baryon number, and so on and so forth. And leptogenesis typically requires very high temperature. So therefore, standard leptogenesis, very high temperature leptogenesis, that you cannot do it here. Because you make this whole EMD for where there is no temperature. It's universe is matter dominated. So therefore, for example, leptogenesis type of models is not so kind of favorable in this kind of picture. You have to create in a different way. So the to, to, to tell it shortly, that there, it's not that there is one mechanism. There are many other mechanisms. Everyone has shortcomings of this baryon number generation. But that is one of the major problems, I think, probably less talked about. But yeah. Any other questions? Okay. What is the inertia? So, what is the inertia when this is starting that killer oscillation? So, what is the inertia? What is when does it start? 
ऑसिलेटिलेटिलेटिलेटिलेटिलेटिलेटिलेटिलेटिलेटिलेटिलेटिलेटिलेटिलेटिलेटिलेटिलेटिलेटिलेटिलेटिलेटिलेटिलेट
with, with, with which direction? Pi or sigma? So I'm not saying in the old model, but mean by when you have calculated this module potential, mm -hmm. you consider the means uh, inflation charge. Broadly, yes. Broadly calculated. Now, once you are combining these two, yeah. I'm getting a interaction charge. Correct, correct, correct. Then this interaction should have itself mm -hmm. changed the initial V5 of the module. No, no, yeah, so my, my, here is my point. So, so, so if I calculate all together, all together, all together, all together, if you so therefore when I write this one, all together means you get this, this and this, all this calculation is all together. Calculated. So, okay, okay. So, when I say so, therefore, here is the point point is that this is a modulus okay. part, okay, yeah, and you can think of inflation part, which is V inflation, <coughs> hardly fine. You can completely think they are not. Um, no a coupled, completely two different potential plus plus. They don't talk with each other. The revolution is no way coupled except the Hubble dumping term and so on and so forth through the Hubble equation. But then once you plug both of them together at one level prior of just writing the two potentials separately, you will see that the potential is going to be coupled. That is that is the typical argument that I'm saying. So maybe, maybe I'm um, maybe I'm not I'm not fully. Been able to convince you that. that's fine i feel that there is a lot more questions and interest but uh, for the lack of time we'll have to end here i just have two comments uh, if i'm allowed to, I'm, I'm taking the liberty of being the organizer so so this was long back i was also doing a job interview and uh, mark kamionkowski was giving the colloquium so he made a fantastic statement that you know when i started my career in grad school there weren't all these fantastic cosmological observations. So being a theoretician was a lot more fun and easy at that time because you did not have uh, so, observational constraints. So, so you, can do, you can do many things. You can do many things. So that, uh, that came to my mind. But then the second, I think, the scientific point I have. So somebody like me, who's a late time cosmologist, so I, I like inflation for the reasons you said, that it is so, so successful in predicting the part factor of the steam. So it's so successful in, you know, in, in describing the fluctuations and its evolution. So how you, how you generate the initial fluctuation, there is no other theory that is even comparable to the predictions of inflation. So that's very good. But then the obvious question that comes to all of our minds, I'm sure people who work on inflation are thinking it very broadly, as you said, that what drives inflation is already a big question. Oh, absolutely, know? absolutely. Because the reason we bring this scalar field and the reason we always talk about that high energy scale is, I thought that the idea of scalar field, my advisor used to say that when, when physicists don't understand anything, they always slug in a scalar field. But uh, I think the idea, the idea and it's magnetic fields for astronomers. And when they don't understand anything, they said that, oh, it's magnetic fields. Yeah. So, uh, so, uh, so I think maybe because this is already you're talking, we are talking about alternative history based on the idea that uh, some of these theories predict, uh, predict these kinds of scalar fields. Yeah. But even before that, uh, I would want, we would like, I, I know, I think we would like to understand uh, this question that. What at all drives inflation? How is this scalar field created? Is there any like uh, reasonable theory that uh, we think? Yes. I probably don't know, but yes. you, yes. what is your take on so, it? Yes. So, 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 first of all, let me uh, let me uh, tell you your, your, your uh, coming across this first comment that it was fun uh, when he said made the comment of fun mm -hmm. working you know, not not too many observations of the. Uh, but I can tell you, I mean, uh, even uh, even after working on in this field uh, for quite some time. Mm -hmm. uh, the field is is no way fertile at the moment. The reason is very simple: we have no data. Period. Because of for the fact of this is honest, this, this is an honest statement. Because you have to you have to you have to be you know I cannot be unnecessarily you know pompous in front of your audience. Because see the, what is the point? The point if you if you just look at it, we are talking about only two observables: this and this. Okay, these observables. Uh, this is the. This is has been measured with a very high accuracy, which is related to the slope of the potential. This one we just have an upper limit. We haven't seen gravitational wave. Okay, but that's not the point. The point was that when so you know this story was almost kind of built up 
even at the even even at my time of let's say phd broadly the story i mean broadly i mean the w map uh, 1 2 3 4 5 the story was already building up this was like like this 2004 5 then since then it is like 20 years has gone by what has happened is that this has this contour has become better and better but we have not seen anything else inflation has many other so called next level of predictions and therefore to falsify okay but Unfortunately, everything fits so canonical that it has become boring. Because unless you have an observable, what do you confront with? So there are so many models. There are so many models, but you have to fit it with only two observables. This and this. Okay. But then therefore, okay, how do you distinguish these models? Because you have no other observables. So a lot of, a lot of energy was kind of thought that the 2018 Planck data is going to give us information about the non-Gaussianities, other observables, and so on and so forth. None of the thing has, has been observed. So it seems like too simplistic. Some, I mean, it is too simplistic to believe. And therefore, you know, um, I, I would say, yeah, I, I would say that, I mean, we should be hopeful. But unless this tensor to scalar ratio is observed, which is like the you know, primordial gravitational wave, okay, we always should keep our options open, try to find out uh, alternatives and think, you know, how, how those, uh, you know, come out to be. And that's the first point. And second point, I would say that um, uh, regarding the nature of the inflaton inflation itself, uh, inflaton inflaton field itself. Field, yeah. Okay. So, generation of the yes, field. yes, generations of the inflaton field. Obviously, when you are asking what what is the origin of the inflaton field, obviously we are we are thinking how the inflaton field can come from some any high energy physics or fundamental yes, physics. Okay. Theory. So something like that, correct? I would say there is obviously no clarity about what might be the origin. Because please try to appreciate the same point. There are many things which can do the same form of the potential and the same two observables. You need data. You, you need more information about the obs observations. Otherwise, it is very difficult to pin down in any fundamental. Because, because you're talking about scale of 10 to the what, 12, 14 mm -hmm. GV, something like that. And you are, the, the goal is very grand. I mean, there is, no, there is no way you can do anything else, an experiment or something. So if we are lucky, let's say new observables comes in, some anomalies gain, get confirmed, then probably we'll be able to more narrow down the space. Otherwise, there are many models. I mean, there are many, there so are many models. So we're still up in the air. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Not driving in oh, absolutely. Sense, absolutely. In yeah. Yes. Section. Absolutely. Yes, so yes, maybe yes. Yes. Absolutely. So let's thank us. Thank you very much. Yes, please. And then, I said, look at the camera. Sorry.